Hey guys, this is part three of my 3D printed side table project. In part one of the series, I show you the 3D printer that I use as well as the design process for the whole side table. Part two of the video is printing the bottom base, but it failed. And then I showed you guys how I salvaged it in the end. If you'd like to see those videos, I'll have a link up above as well as links in the comments below. This is going to be the last video in the series. I know it's going to be so sad. Oh, I'm so glad it's over. This video is going to be the last in the series where I'm going to show you how I built the tabletop out of walnut, how the whole thing comes together, as well as the finishing shots of it all made and looking great. It'll look great. Yeah. I purchased a six foot piece of walnut from my local lumber yard and cut them up into four pieces. This will yield a 20 inch round top. Once I had them cut, I played around with the arrangement of the boards to give me a grain pattern that I liked. Once I was happy, I marked my boards so I knew where to later place my dominoes, as well as the order of how to join my boards. So at this point in the video, I should probably show you guys how I join boards. So this is my Stanley number eight hand plane, specifically the jointer plane. Its job is to make sure that edges of boards are straight and surfaces of large boards are nice and flat. The long profile of the plane allows it to work its way over bumps and shaving off the peaks till you have a smooth surface. The longer the plane, the easier it is for a woodworker to flatten the surface. The reason I like using a hand plane are that it's inexpensive. I bought this used for about $60. Yeah, you heard that right, 60 bucks. It doesn't make a lot of noise. It's easy to use. It takes up no space at all. Personally, I love to have power tools for everything, but I unfortunately just don't have the space as I work out of a single car garage. Okay, let's get back to the build. A technique I learned for planing joining edges is to plane the two mating surfaces together at the same time. This way, if you're not square, it doesn't matter. It'll always fit perfectly together. I repeated this process on all the edges. That's why this is so important to label them correctly so you know which mating surfaces are which. So for this next step, I use my Festool Domino to put in some alignment dominoes to help me glue it all together. It's really not necessary for a small glue up like this, but I know it definitely makes the job easier so that I know that my glue up will be perfectly aligned. If you don't have a domino, you can just use dowels or a biscuit jointer. I repeated this process on all the mating edges. Okay, see that red bar? That means it's recording. Okay, you want I know. <laughs> okay, okay. So do you see me? Yeah. Okay, so now you want to keep looking at what I'm doing here, all right? The cameraman has to get paid. What do you think you get paid with? What should we pay you with? Toys. Toys? <laughs> I was thinking more sweets. What kind of toys? You know. I don't know. People don't know. You tell them. What kind of toys? Yeah. The big hot wheels that were the chair side and top the Hey, cameraman, make sure you, the camera stays still. You gotta, you, you, gotta, you gotta focus. Can you tell me while while filming? So, we, so it's a, it's a chair chamber that's $100. What is it? The chair chamber that's $100. The Hot Wheels, Tyrannosaurus, Rex, Hot Wheels set? Yeah, and if they can't eat, it poop, get pooped out okay. from the T-Rex. You like spending time in the shop with me? Yeah. Yeah? How do you like being the cameraman? Good. Good? All right. You, want, you can always be my cameraman. How about that? Yeah. Okay. And you think we're done, Sniffles? Yeah? All right. Glue up. Done. Look at me. So this is the following morning. I had let the board sit overnight to dry. And the next phase here is to use my Shaper Origin, which is a handheld CNC machine. And here I'm laying down domino tape. And this is what uh, the machine uses to orient itself to figure out where it is and how accurately to cut it. So we're going to use this to cut the outer diameter and the inner diameter uh, for how the tabletop is going to sit on the pedestal. Um, you don't need to use a shaper origin. I have this fancy tool, so I'm going to use it. But there are tons of ways of making a circle jig to cut the uh, circles out. I suggest cutting the outside out, then cutting the inside hole. Or the inside could be bored out with a, um, like a large Forstner bit or a circle cutting bit. But here I am 
uh, creating a new surface and scanning the work place so that the machine can triangulate itself and know where to start. Um, so this this was supposed to be really easy, but I ran into a hiccup here. I um, wasn't getting my dust extraction working right, so I thought maybe my bag was full and I had to change it out. But it turned out that um, this was a brand new vacuum and I was kind of dumb and forgot to do something. So somehow I, when I got this vacuum, I never set up my bag. I, I, I'm pretty sure I hooked up the bag to this thing, but this was in here. I just took it out and this was the bag that should be filling up with stuff. Ugh, what a mess. I'm like, why is this thing not suctioning up anything? It's because the filters are all clogged up. Oh, man. Great way to start the day. Ugh. Yep. Fail. All right, so the hole is cut out. So I'm going to unplug it because it's stuck in with double-sided tape. Fits in. Oh, yeah. All right. Perfect. No wobble. Perfect. I had my mask on the whole time. It is, there's no play. It's exactly right. Oh, disaster strikes again. The bit broke. Didn't fuck up my cut, but the bit broke. Uh, I think I have an extra one somewhere, but let's see. Uh, you know, and everything just, just doesn't go right. Yes. Okay. Wait, this is, oh, you know what? I shouldn't be using a straight cut bit. That's probably why. I should probably be using a down cut. I'm using a straight cut bit on walnut because I usually cut plywood and that's perfect but I should probably be using this all right let's try this again ready here we go Yeah, this thing does not need any glue on top. It just stays. It is a little, like, pedestal tables are a little shaky, but I mean, I mean, I'm putting a lot of weight here. The whole thing is not gonna tip, but it is like rocky. But yeah, check out the fit on the top, a little detail. Oh yeah, it's flush too. I'm a little worried about that because it might be, um, I finish it, I think it might go a little bit lower. So the next phase of this project is I'm gonna put a chamfer uh, around the edges so that I thin down the width of the side. So it's gonna have like an angle here. Uh, so I'm gonna mark where I think it should start and end. So somewhere around uh, halfway maybe, and then up here would be somewhere in. So I'm using a, uh, a scribe. So putting the needle on the edge, kind of just marking around. 
and then on the side, here's the line, and then that's gonna go. So I'm gonna try to shave all of this off from this line to that line. So to cut the bevel, I had two ideas. Uh, one was to make a jig on the table saw and put the blade at an angle and feed it through, spin it, feed it through. But that kind of scares me. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, and instead, I'm going to use a spoke shave. It's going to be a lot more work, but it's going to be quiet and safe and... I get to practice some hand tool work. So with a spoke shave, there's a blade, like a plain blade that sticks out. And the way I have it set is that it's deeper on one side and a little bit less on the other. So I can kind of use like a, like a deep rough cut or like a small shallower cut here. And the thing with using a spoke shave on wood is that you have to learn to read the grain. So right now the grain is kind of coming up here. And, and think of grain kind of like uh, when you're petting a cat, if you pet it, along its back it's smooth but then if you rough run your hand back the other way it's really rough and the same thing will happen with a spoke shave or a plane is what happens is if you go against the grain you get like the chatter and the finish is not smooth at all so as i'm coming around this thing the, the grain is constantly shifting so i'm either pulling or pushing and then sometimes even like scraping up this way because it's cleaner so it's a little tricky because you, you just got to read it. But as soon as you get going, you kind of can uh, can get the hang of it. So. This is the final finishing of the board. I have already gone through sanding it through all the grits and now I am using my sander with a uh, finishing pad on it from Orca Abrasives. A really cool pad, you guys should check them out. So I just use OD's oil on top and I just use my sander, spread it around. This thing is a game changer. Um, but before I finish up and show you guys the final video of it all, I just want to say Thank you so much for watching this incredibly long video and for anyone who's seen part one part two and part three of this build you guys are extremely amazing awesome um a um, huge thank you i can't even say enough if you guys are new to the channel uh, and you like what you see please consider subscribing to the channel um, hit that notification bell and leave me a comment let me know how i did um, this is my first time doing a format like this in vlog form I might keep this up, I might not, but I love your opinion. Thank you guys so much, and let's get to the beauty shots.